Velma, Episode 10, the story of one writer's desperate attempt to try and find somebody else to blame for their sad, miserable, failed life. Now, Episode 10 is the finale, and if the point of a finale is to take everything that came before and combine it into one great crescendo, then the Velma finale definitely succeeds on that. This is the single most repugnant episode of television I've ever watched, and the only reason that this show won't permanently damage the HBO Max brand is that nobody's watching it. We start with Velma looking miserable. Sorry, that's a bit redundant. We start with Velma. Apparently, she was the serial killer. And let's face it, even if she's innocent, she gave birth to Velma, which is more than enough reason to be in prison. Well, Velma can't believe it, despite the fact that she's actually admitted to doing it. Why would she go out and swap people's brains over? Surely, if she was swapping people's brains, the first person she would have changed would be Velma. She talks about how she's fallen out with her friends, like Norville, for accusing his dad. She's mad at Daphne because she kissed Fred. Although, when she takes a swing at Daphne, we get an image that makes Velma look as attractive on the outside as she is on the inside. But no one believes Velma because of her mum's confession. I did it because I wanted to put the brain of a popular girl into the head of my daughter, Velma. I mean, when you put it like that, it seems quite reasonable. Any brain would have been an improvement, but it does seem particularly cruel to make somebody look like Velma. I mean, I've heard of falling from heaven and hitting the ugly tree on the way down, but no one expected you to turn it into a baseball bat and have it repeatedly applied to your face for the rest of your life. I mean, with problems like that, I can understand why the writers, I mean Velma, have an issue. I have a feeling this intro scene is just remarkably similar to the writer's room. Absolutely no expense spent, dirty as hell, and the creators scribbling the script onto the wall in their own excrement. I mean, to be fair, that would make the writer's room not that different to the general streets in California, but, you know, that's just Hollywood returning to their roots. If she's now saying she's guilty, why did she pretend to have amnesia? She just found out you were a daughter. No wonder she pretended to have amnesia. At the end of this show, I'm going to pretend I have amnesia as well. Fake it till you make it, that's what I say. With you, Velma, it's not a medical condition. It's a coping strategy. She'll be sentenced to death row and worse. Not gonna let Velma talk to her, are you? That's cruel and unusual punishment. Brutally hounded by true crime podcasters. Well, at least that's a step up. Maybe they could do a celebration stream when Velma gets murdered. But the cops refuse to let Velma see her mom because it's all wrapped up. And they say the only way you're getting anywhere nearer in that cell is if you get arrested as well. And it'd have to be for something serious because the boss will just refuse to arrest you for crimes? Bear in mind all the other police stuff that's been shown through this entire series. Now they're like, oh yeah, they don't arrest people. The only thing he'd arrest you for right now is murder. I mean, if we need a victim, I've got a perfect option for you. We cut over to Daphne with Fred's mom, who's basically living in her own delusional fantasy land. Well, Mindy Kaling's delusional fantasy land. Where we find out that Fred's mom is the brains behind the operation. Though I married into this company, I'm the one who built it into the multi-billion dollar target of child labor lawsuits it is today. Yeah, because that happens all the time. It's incredibly realistic. Welcome to the richest women in the world. Number one, inherited from her mother whose father, built L'Oreal. And if you're wondering why I'm using the 2021 list, it's because the 2022 list hides things like that. She's the granddaughter of the founder of L'Oreal. But we're not going to mention who that was, we're just going to say it followed her mother, who was the world's wealthiest woman. We're not going to lie to you, we're just going to be deliberately misleading. Number two, daughter of Sam Walton. Number three, divorce. Number four, married to David, formerly owned by her husband. Company started by their grandfather. Her father founded the company. Inherited from her mother, who got it from her husband. Mining group founded by her father. Got it through marriage, although she's widowed. Every single one got it through marriage, divorce or inheritance from a man, but no, please tell us how you married into that rich, already successful family, and yet somehow you were the brains of the operation. How did they make their money to begin with if they weren't the ones making it successful? And if you truly are the brains of the operation, then why didn't you make your own company? But she considers herself a genius as she has this rare ability to smell things. I have impeccable taste. Our newest fragrance. Oh, I love that. Oh, and you have the ability to tell the difference between something that smelt nice and something that smelt disgusting. I can see how you solely made that company a success. What's it called? Smells like mommy. Oh, now you're just stealing ideas. Gwyneth Paltrow put that in a candle, but no one expected you to make his entire scent out of it. Does that jar of perfume explode as well, or was it just a candle's? You mean I'm not just a diversity hire for the company photo shoot? No, we got that sorted when we hired the writers. Turns out, though, that she wants to hire Daphne as an intern because she manages to turn Fred into something other than exactly the stereotype they've been trying to push him as. We're gonna take the trope of behind every great man as a great woman and just say she's responsible for all of it. I tell you, that potpourri isn't gonna choose itself. Modern day Anne Sullivan. A celebrity dog trainer. There's no way he could have gone to sleep if you hadn't covered his bed in the 15 different types of pillows. I can see why Fred needs Daphne. I need your help teaching him that same kind of strategic thinking and drive. Yeah, 15 types of pillows, there's not even enough room. You've gotta to learn to stack them like a game of Tetris. You thought chess was strategic? You've seen nothing yet. AI has even learned how to play Go, 
but it cannot master the strategic talents of what can only be called a Hogwarts voice 2. That's right guys, we've got a new Type B in town. <laughs> Elden Ring memes you will be missed, but I never thought I'd see the day when Type B was replaced by voice 2. Velma goes to talk to Fred, and Fred is like raging out for some reason. He's like, my mom doesn't even trust me with the business. Look at my talents. She's wrong! Look how good I paint the company logo! Really shows the business acumen of the writers when they think your ability to run a company has anything to do with how well you can draw your logo. Then again, they think their prized businesswoman would make a perfume that smells like a sushi restaurant, so I'm not sure we're dealing with sensible people here. But it turns out that all of this is just a desperate attempt to try and pretend that Valmer is a Scooby-Doo show, rather than a few horrible people's last attempt to try and make anybody care about their lives. I'm just sensitive from always being wrong about everything. Oh, Fred's just wrong about everything all the time. What can we expect? That's normal. We hadn't even gone 30 seconds between humiliating him that time. We're actually stepping up the pace. But we're getting close to the end of the series. Everyone's excited. No wonder Mindy Kaling can't contain her racism. Well, then I have good news, because I'm taking you to the one place no one will ever doubt you. I didn't even know this was coming next. It's just so rapid fire in this episode. I, I guess it was inevitable, because Mindy takes Fred to the police station. <laughs> She's like, you're only going to arrest me for something as severe as murder? Well, have you heard about my bigoted delusions? I've committed the only crime worse than eating ethnic food on an airplane. But would you arrest her if someone like me said someone like her was bothering him? I mean, in all honesty, yes, but that's because it's Valma and no one should be subjected to a company. Not because the writers are incompetent and desperately looking for somebody else to blame for it. Well, yeah, that would do it. Oh, we just all knew it because this is exactly how the world works. Yeah, let me assure you that apparently this is funny because it's true. And we have evidence that it's not true because if it was, someone definitely would have used it to stop this show getting made. Do you understand how many piles of cash this show has burned? We go over to Daphne who's found a note in her locker in a geode. I don't know why it has to be in a geode. She could have just signed her name like normal people, but apparently... We have to get a rock for everything nowadays. It's from her mom, who managed to escape the serial killer earlier in the series. And she's given it to Daphne because she thinks it has something to do with the murders. And while I know it can never make up for having abandoned you twice, please consider us even. I'm so glad that the mother apologized for abandoning you. Well, the father didn't care. And if you think I'm going overboard with this, oh, no, no. Just because you haven't seen the rest of the episode yet, where they spell it all out for you. The creature that lives in the toilet feeds it too. I mean, that's no way to refer to Velma. Actually, I take that back. That's a great way to refer to Velma. You are the creature that feeds in the toilet. Now, for some reason, this entire station only has one cell, and so they put her in there with her mom. I don't understand why you have more than one person to one cell, but here we are. Now, her mom just keeps repeating the same thing over and over again in the exact same intonation. I did it because I wanted to put the brain of a popular girl into the head of my daughter. In other words, she delivers every line like Mindy Kaling. Why? I can't do this over and over again. I don't know whether it's a voice or whether she's actually dead inside. When I try to say what actually happened, that's what comes out. I don't think I had amnesia. I think I was hypnotized. How does that even make any sense? You can now be hypnotized into having amnesia? Does it matter how you've forgotten your memories? You've still forgotten your memories, which we call amnesia. But no, all of this is a desperate attempt to try and wrap bandages around the bigotry and form some kind of plot. Hypnotized? I thought that only worked in 70s cartoons and 80s comedy clubs. No, apparently it also works for talentless 43-year-olds. Luckily at that moment, the policeman turns up and goes to put Velma's mom out of her misery. Fail, Velma! You're not ruining this for me! You should know better than to underestimate how many lives Velma can ruin. We did get in that nice little dig though. Oh yeah, the police actually enjoy it. Oh yeah, it's not justice based on evidence. Oh no. They get a kick out of it. But while her mom is taken away, the creature that feeds in the toilet remains in the cell. But the creature soon forgets about her mom when Daphne turns up to show her a clue. The obvious necklace that was repeatedly shown throughout the entire series is actually a pocket watch. Where did the watch come from? Because it wasn't on the necklace earlier. Nobody knows. Velma's hallucinations come back. And I don't mean her general worldview, which is just an entire delusion to begin with. Now, this is like a second layer of fake victimhood over the initial one. <laughs> oh no, I died in hell as a cross country race. I told you Velma to stop teasing me like that. How many times in this series have you supposedly died, got us all excited and then we're like, oh no, she's still going. Have you never learned? You drive a stake through their heart to make sure. But it's all a memory of when her mom went missing, which is apparently two years ago, although she definitely looks a lot younger than two years. This is Velma now, and that's Velma two years ago? I mean, talk about a growth spurt. Turns out the hallucinations were caused by the murderer all along who hypnotized her. My mystery solving car this. No one will ever believe me because I'm a weirdo. I mean, if you're gonna get hypnotized, at least he did it with the truth. But it turns out that the pocket watch that was used to hypnotize people has an inscription on of the name of the guy that owned it. Now, I don't want to give out tips for this kind of thing, but I do think it's common sense not to engrave your name into evidence. But remember, this is Velma. They think Knives Out is clever, and so all of the clues just coincidentally fall in their lap. She's supposed to be a detective. She just doesn't 
detect anything. People bring all the evidence to her and she just points it out. But we get a flashback of what we already knew, of how the general hired the scientists to swap people's brains over in the Scooby. Look, just because we don't want him in the show because it might actually entertain people doesn't mean we don't want to live off his legacy. Ghosts do not exist. If you'd like to join me back in reality... Mindy, you have never lived in reality your entire life. Exhibit A, everything you've ever said in this show. <laughs> the only honest things you've ever said in this show are the ones that you're trying to take the piss out of. You're like a compass that can spin around and will always point in the exact wrong direction. It's actually an incredible talent. You must have a lot of practice. I mean, even the law of averages suggests that you should be correct accidentally at some point. We get this scene because the writers are obsessed, but Daphne leaves in a limo to go and meet Fred, and he's getting spied on by Fred's father. I don't know whether this is meant to be creepy, or whether Mindy's just saying that everyone that looks like him acts like this. At this point, the show and the creator's bigotry have just become one, and so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Is it a clue or a sign that you've been writing a manifesto against Hogwarts legacy? At this point, we could make a quiz show out of it, although we would need a catchier name. So then, as if going full circle back to the pilot, we get this scene where, again, Again, I can't show you anything in it, but we got the brains and jars in this scene along with everybody who is still in high school. But basically, Valma turns up also in her birthday suit, which believe me is a sight no one should be subjected to. And then Giggity comes along and complains at Valma because she's been treating Norval like crap and now Norval is changing school. At this point, I still don't know whether to call her Giggity or Gigi. You know, like the horse. But I think I'm going to stick with Giggity because if you want to be called Gigi, you should at least spell it correctly. But Valma's amazed. Norval would have told me if he was leaving school and Giggity says he did. He left you a voicemail. You know, those ones that you never check. And where did her phone come from? Poor Nate! Firstly, nobody wants the answer to that question. And secondly, I'm just glad they didn't show her getting it out on screen. You know they would have been willing to if they could have got away with it. Ah, oh, next time, I'm gonna use more butter on it. Oh, what has this show reduced me to, I tell you? <laughs> So Norval's upset he's leaving, until he sees the actual school he's going to. Valma isn't here! This is amazing! <laughs> the show tries to make out that it's got nothing to do with Valma, but the only thing that would make me that happy is if I realised that if Valma approached me, she would get attacked by 50 people with swords. Oh my god, I'm home! Which I think we can safely assume from this picture. And on the left, on the side of the building, it reads Tolkien Book Club Today. Although given the horrible state of Velma's universe, I think we can definitely assume that it's not actually Tolkien's books, it's just the Rings of Power script. Then we cut over to a scene of Velma listening to Norval's voice messages. Velma, it's Norval. I'm switching schools. See you in hell. Velma's definitely going to hell, but there's no reason for Norval to go there. Unless he's going down there to laugh at her, I think that would be acceptable. In fact, we should probably just wheel down everyone from heaven to laugh at Velma in hell. It'd do wonders for them, Morel. I know they're supposed to be living in, like, perfection. But even that's going to be improved by taking the piss out of Velma. But for some reason, Velma starts falling for him. Damn it, Velma. Why didn't you ever listen to these? Because you're a cow. You treat everyone around you like filth because you're a disgusting bigot. And the only reason you're getting soppy about it now is because you're upset that you've lost one of your orbiters as a punching bag. But then we get a whole scene of Velma being a horrible person. I know that's basically the series, but this one's especially bad. She keeps going through all of his voicemails. Like, ah, oh, it's so amazing. I get to listen to him so much. Ah, oh, I can't believe how I've treated him all of this time as I just repeatedly kicked him in the face for forever. That's even making me cry that I'll never be able to treat him like crap again. You're supposed to feel sorry for her in this scene. I clapped. Call me back. Call me back. Call me back. Oh, Norval's just so amazing. I can't believe that he won't be around for me to crush his spirit in the future anymore. Wow, this is the first voicemail he ever left me. Should have been the last you thought he would have learned better after that. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry your mom got taken, and I think it's cool that you're wearing her glasses now. It should have just been a two-minute recording of the Joker laughing, screaming, You get what you deserve! Wow, he even noticed these. I mean, they're so massive, they're pretty hard to avoid. And how's he supposed to not realize if you can't tell that someone's wearing glasses? You need glasses. But she notices that her glasses come from Fred's family business. She's had these things for two years and have never noticed the brand on them. They were a mum, so they were special to her. You would have thought she would have looked at them at some point. But you know, it's not like Velma's supposed to be a detective or anything. You can't expect her to observe things. But with her newfound clue, she goes to look at her board. Gets out a magnifying glass and realises <gasps> it's the same logo. It's even on his pocket watch. Wait, it's on this pocket watch as well. Velma is such a terrible detective that she didn't notice any of these details at any point. Why, when you were looking at these objects, did you not look at them? I mean, at this point, the only realistic part of the show is that Valmer is as thick as her glasses. I figured it out! How to wash that sweater? You've literally never smelled better! Okay, maybe there's two realistic parts of the show. I suppose with Valmer being so used to everyone avoiding her naturally anyway, the smell began to not matter as much. So Valmer gets her dad to take her to Fred's estate, and rather than just going through the front gate, her dad lifts her over the wall. He's a lawyer, this makes perfect sense. Of course he'd do this for his little daughter! They do have an interesting question, though. So if serial killer caused your hallucinations, how did me believing that your mom was kidnapped stop them? Well, that's called a plot hole that doesn't have an explanation, but it was useful at the time for that part of the story, so we said one 
one thing, and now we're just going to retcon and lie about it in another. Your problem with Elmer's dad was assuming that the creators have any talent or care about the plot. Don't do that. That's a mistake. My hallucinations preyed on my insecurity that I'm a weirdo no one would believe. But you are a weirdo that no one will believe. That's not an insecurity, that's just a fact. You just seem to assume that people don't like you because of physical characteristics, when really, you're just a horrible person that no one can stand. So she goes on to say that you believing in me actually improved my self-esteem, and I thought Norval cured them by making me laugh, but actually it was because he made me feel cared about. Even though that's not true either, he didn't make her feel cared about. She genuinely did find them funny because she didn't believe it. So it can't make her feel cared about when she thought it was a joke. But this is a Con over a massive plot hole, and they don't actually expect you to think about it, so I'm not going to. I don't see why I should care about the plot more than the writers themselves, especially when we've got the crescendo of the episode coming up. Oh boy, you've seen nothing yet. So Valma sneaks into the lab via the secret entrance while her father goes off to call the police. The lawyer just sent his daughter to break into a manor, and he's calling the police? Why didn't he follow you over the wall into the murderer's compound to protect you? Or is he just hoping you get hurt? Because if he did, he's got my full support. So Velma goes down the well. She decides to make one last call to Norville. Nor if this is Velma, don't forget, you're a piece of sh Short, straightforward, and honest. I'm liking this new novel. You'll always be my best friend. That's it. Bye. Love you. Love you! Yeah, that was a mistake. No one is gonna believe that you could feel the emotion of love in your cold, dead heart. What, did all the maggots wrap together and try and make one unifying feeling for once or something? The problem is, bats attack her. And I say problem. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to tell Valma not to tease me. She's doing it again, though. Yeah, unfortunately, she survives. It gets even worse when she landed in the water, but the bucket landed on solid ground. We were so close to a great finish. A few feet to the right, and we could have had an entertaining episode. So Velma carries on, and she finds the lab. Opens the door, see Fred and Daphne tied up with the murderer in the room. Unfortunately, he notices the door's open. And I say unfortunately, I'm kind of rooting for him, to be honest. So, unfortunately, Velma sneaks past the killer and tries to rescue Fred and Daphne. Velma! Get me out of here. Oh, and Fred, if there's time. She can rescue you, you can throw Velma at the killer, and then you can rescue Fred. You to escape Velma doesn't win-win. The killer captures Velma and we get to live in constant disappointment as she escapes by firing perfume in his face. Oh no, please don't distract me by smelling nice. Although if it is Gwyneth Paltrow's fish market, then I can kind of understand why. Thing is, the bats attack him. It turns out they're attracted to Gwyneth Paltrow's loaf of bread. So Velma kicks him over and a radio falls on his face. Oh my god, you're a genius. Okay, Daphne, don't go overboard. The one time Velma had a thought, it's definitely gonna die of loneliness. How did you know the perfume would do that? My shrill voice usually repels bats. Velma, your voice repels everybody. In fact, you don't even need to talk. You approaching gives everyone an ominous feeling of dread, so they leave. It's a state of being that the writers of this show are very accustomed to. But it's time for the reveal. Velma's worked it all out the moment she saw that logo on that watch, even though it was there all along and she hadn't noticed it for ages. Once she finally noticed it, it was obvious. The serial killer started by trying to frame Velma. The killer's plan was fooled when Fred went to prison for a crime he didn't commit. You remember the one that made Velma disappointed? Fred is probably innocent. Yeah, but isn't it comforting to see a rich white guy get wrongly convicted for once? I'm too distracted to enjoy it. What? <laughs> but she realizes the third one wasn't used to incriminate Velma. It was all used to get Fred out of jail. Because serial killer is... Dun dun dun! Now I did make my prediction at the end of the last episode, and I got it largely correct. I just got the wrong parent, because I thought, well, they're not going to blame a Voice 2 for all of this, are they? It turns out that they are, because Voice 1 would be too stupid to pull it off, so only a Voice 2 could ever have done something this magnificent. It turns out that Fred's mom is the daughter of the general who is the guy going around setting up Scooby to cut out people's brains. I hope you're keeping track of this. It's a very, um, MILF manor kind of relationship everyone's got going on. Like I say, this isn't a family tree. We're getting very close to a straight line. Wanted to replace your brain with that of someone more capable. Oh, that 30 second time we're up was again. Obviously, somebody insult Fred, please. Can you call him thick? Maybe get Valma to do it because it'll carry more weight when it's said by somebody absolutely repulsive. I couldn't let your incompetence ruin my life's work. What life's work? You married into a company, you didn't do anything. You didn't earn anything, you didn't work for anything, you just kind of existed and got given everything by, uh, Fred's dad. But no, no, I'm sure you're really the competent one of the pair. Yeah, you're the true brains behind his already rich, successful company. It's not just Valma that's deluded in this show, it just seems to be a voice two option. The way my father's incompetence ruined Project Scooby. Oh yeah, we've got to destroy him as well, the original general. We've got a sale on, all testosterone must go. <laughs> Apparently, Dr. Badu actually was incredible, because she is, after all, a voice two, so she's not gonna fail at something. She actually swapped people's brains all the time very successfully. It was easy for her. Being a voice 
Grace 2, all of her friends watched reality TV. She was used to people having their brains removed. Purdue's main problem was that the general decided to take credit for the work. Though it turns out it wasn't about the science for her, she just wanted the glory. Essentially, she was an egotistical maniac, which according to Velma's writers is a great thing to be. She completely lost her mind when she found out she wasn't going to get the credit for horrific human experiments. So she swapped the brains back, bricked up her lab, and hid the journals so that nobody could replicate the experiments. And in an attempt to get her to tell him where the journals were, he had her sectioned in a padded cell. Having spent 10 episodes around voice twos in Velma, let's face it, it was probably a good standard procedure. I'm sure I've suggested this for Velma previously myself. But Dr. Purdue didn't crack. Because she was already a lunatic running human experiments. I'm not sure why we're supposed to think she was some kind of genius. But without the journals, the general couldn't continue with his brain swapping, which obviously made him act like a voice too. And so he left in shame leaving his daughter behind. Which, given what we've seen about her behaviour since, can you really blame him? She's telling the story as if he failed and then committed a horrific act. I just consider it a lucky escape. To save us from financial ruin, I married William Jones. But it's definitely me that made the company, even though I married this guy for his money. Oh no, I can't believe it. Colour me shocked. You love me, right? Shh. He marries because he loves her, and she marries because she loves his wallet. And remember, as far as the show's concerned, she's doing the right thing. This is just smart business. If you want to be a great businesswoman, obviously you should just marry somebody and then pretend you did all the work. The writers of the show truly are horrible people with horrible worldviews. And after building Jones Gentleman's accessories into a global brand. Oh yeah, she did it all. She built it into a global brand, absolutely. She didn't marry him for his money, which means that he already had a successful company. Oh no, she did all of the work on 100% obviously. You know, just like the Forbes richest list. The one that got retconned in 2022 because the previous one pointed out an uncomfortable truth. You couldn't stand to see it undone by your own son. I mean, he's got more rights to the company than you did. At least he's blood related. You just existed for a bit. So she came up with a plan to give Fred a better brain. Because Fred's been destroyed by a life of privilege, it means he's never had to work for anything. If you've never had to work with anything, how can you actually achieve something? And that's not me saying that. They actually say that in the show in a bit. But before that though, we finish the story. Velma's mum found the diaries, and so Velma's mum got hypnotized into rebuilding the lab and carrying on the experiments. I don't know why Fred's mum couldn't read the books and do the experiments herself and rebuild the lab, because quite frankly, she's so intelligent. Surely she'd be able to do it. But why pick the brain of a hot popular girl? We're literally the only murders people care about. Doesn't that go against your earlier narrative earlier in the episode? Because I wanted someone like me. A woman who could appreciate what she might achieve as the male president of a global corporation. Privilege! Don't you understand if you've grown up being crushed by that systemic oppression? then obviously when you actually become a man, you'll be able to achieve far more than they would because they just don't appreciate what they've had. Oh, those pesky men folk, they have it so easy. They just don't realize what they've got. That's right, we're spinning a story here and we don't even realize how it could apply to us. If you've lived a life of privilege, equality seems like oppression. And at no point did we ever consider that that might apply the other way around. Don't worry though, the writers are definitely the smart ones here. But now I see the perfect brain for Fred. It's Velma. Oh, I thought a popular girl would be the best replacement for him. But I never even considered that Mindy Kaling could be. So she brings in Fred's dad, who she's hypnotized because he found out about them. Oh God! Look at his eyes! He's hypnotized! Being hypnotized changes your eyes, then why did that never happen to Velma, or her mom, or anybody else in the entire show for every other episode? The poor fool figured out what I was up to. Oh, he's just a poor fool who worked out my entire plan. I don't know, this entire scene is just like getting lectured to by an imbecile. I'm just so smart as they drool on their own shoes. So they tie Velma down rather than shooting her in the face. Not only are you brilliant, who more than you would appreciate the advantages of being a handsome, rich white man? There are so many lies in that bit, I don't even know where to start. Firstly, Velma is brilliant. Are you deluded? Has she hypnotized you? Because I can't imagine how else you could spit that out. Oh no, yeah, Velma. Poor, oppressed Velma. She's been so downtrodden her entire life by everybody else. Of course, she'll be able to fully utilize all of the advantages that Fred has had and just not realized. Because you could certainly make a TV show with the roles reversed, couldn't you? That'd be entirely allowed. And it would be praised by HBO Max, even get a season two. The critics would love it. Couldn't possibly be that the writers are talentless hacks and someone who has never had to earn anything in their entire life will just naturally assume that everybody else got there the same way. Advantages? You think we like being president of the United States? What do you mean we? You do realize only one person is president of the United States at a time, right? What is this we? Why don't we arbitrarily group people up into a characteristic and then pretend they're like one unified person? Because we're so thick, we can't understand what an individual is. There's a word for people who see superiority and inferiority 
based off physical characteristics. I, c I can't quite work it out though, but it definitely applies to the writers. I was reminded that hot popular girls your age don't yet realize how much the deck is stacked against them. You can tell this woman's old enough to be on Milf Manor. She's entirely deluded. The deck is stacked against us so much that we can just exist and get given things. Do you want to talk about Twitch? Only friends. What's the main driving force of TikTok? I can't, I can't work it out. Do you have to be intelligent, smart, witty, creative, or do you just have to photograph what you were born with? Go back to telling us how you're so thick that you don't even understand how the world works. But a stumpy know-it-all with bad eyes and a worse haircut such- Okay, I take that back. Maybe she is aware of reality after all. You stumpy know-it-all with a bad haircut that eats out of the toilets. Yes. We do have names of Alma after this episode. At least there's something. You know what, Victoria? You're right. Voice 2 is correct. I never saw that one coming. So then she starts ranting at Fred. I am so sick of rich guys like you. Not only not realizing how much is handed to them. He's literally about to get murdered by a Voice 2 who only achieved everything she has in life by marrying somebody as a gold digger. But still thinking they're the victims when they mess everything up. And as such hasn't earned anything she's got and shouldn't be entitled to a single penny. But no, please, go back to your delusions. Because of their lazy entitlement and fragile. Egos. Oh no, the, oh, those fragile egos. Don't you understand? If you defend yourself against an accusation, that's just proof of my accusation. This is why you don't defend yourself. You just call scum scum. Like the writers. My ego is not fragile! But the writers are scum. So Fred rages out, breaks free, wrestles the gun off his dad, all by the power of white fragility. I'm pretty sure this show in my country would classify as a hate crime. Hey, you don't have to be a deluded bint when you work for HBO Max, but it does help. A spoonful of sugar helps the poison go down. But Fred gets angry and threatens Velma. You did this! No, Fred! I only said those things to rile you up! Okay, but even if she was doing it so everyone can escape? Can we just shoot her anyway? She deserves it. I mean, yes, I feel that way, but... I told you the show was a tease, and she admitted that she believed it. Unfortunately, he just shoots the restraints rather than going full Joker. As such, she doesn't get what she deserves. No, I'm glad you said it, Velma. Only friends tell each other the truth. That's why Velma is the villain. Evil and not anybody's friend. The truth isn't whatever bigoted belief you've got to tell yourself to try and desperately prevent you crying yourself to sleep over your own failures this night. I can only apologize to the creators that you do have such low opinions of your own achievements that you have to create this filth, but if I was you, I'd probably be ashamed of myself as well. So Fred goes off to stop his mom. Of course, 30 seconds have passed, so we should probably humiliate Fred again. I'm sorry, I have an excuse. Yeah, I'm sure that'll go down well. She told him I'm possessed and he believes her and then she took the gun off him. She was lying. But he's an idiot, you see, so he just believed her. So so Daphne and Valmer have a heart to heart as they think they're about to die. Daphne, I know you've only got seconds left to live, but come on. Standards. I love you too, Norville. What? Norville? I told you you should have standards. Imagine getting turned down by Velma. That's enough to push anyone over the edge. That's like finding out that the manure bucket thinks that you smell bad. That's only happened to Velma previously. But Norville turns up. She left him one voicemail and so he came running back once again after how horrible she's treated him his entire life. He had his perfect school and he's like, yeah, I'm going to give all that up. For Velma. So the mother fires at him, he deflects it with the sword, hits a rock above her, and then everyone gets covered in gore. Which, let's face it, is still less disgusting than anyone getting with Velma. So Norval starts throwing up in a corner, presumably because he realizes he's gonna have to spend more time with Velma. I solved the case! Happy dance! And at least I can understand it for Velma, because when you're that disgusting, getting covered in gore is, it's like a step up. Some people might not recognize you and want to spend a couple of seconds in your company. It did get worse though when she started continuing the dancing and we got this. I didn't think Velma could get more repulsive and then I saw this. If you want to know why the video wasn't out yesterday, it's because I was subjected to this and spent the rest of the day just being Norville. But because they find the killer, they get celebrated, given keys to the city. She gets a day dedicated to her called uh, Vermin, and they all just start beating the crap out of each other with the keys. She's like, at least I've got my mum back, because that's all I care about. So she changes the locks to a house, steals the house off the true owners of the house who have a baby. And she's just like, yeah, I don't care about them. My parents can go away because I only want to spend time with the person who's been hypnotized and therefore might be able to stand my presence for a second. Fred can't sleep and so his dad suggests that he tries some of the um, herbal treatments and Daphne decides to beat up her moms. Reverse. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a hate crime. Because little did we know, the real mystery was just starting. That's because they're getting a season two. Because I'm assuming HBO isn't going to cancel it, even though it's once again going to destroy their entire reputation. They probably think it's okay, as no one's going to see that either. Just going to be me and anyone else that makes videos on it suffering. You got a sharp brain. You realize that's not a compliment, right? We know the actual shape of a brain. And you're all about, okay, it's not only pointy, but it's sharp, which means it's smooth. 
You've got a pointy, smooth brain. Which actually does explain a lot of things, except for how her eyebrows go over her hair. Thank you. Wasn't a compliment, but at least we know you're thick enough to think it was. Kind of proves his point. That actually means a lot. Almost like a man. <sighs> Don't worry, Velma, if you marry one, you can take credit for all of his accomplishments. Like Fred's mom did. Season one of Velma, everybody, with it getting a season two, because apparently it's already been made and they just cut it in half for some reason. I don't know, maybe they just thought people wouldn't actually be able to survive this much filth in one go. It does prove, though, that you should be very careful about who you hire, because your employees can sink your entire company. And if there's one lesson to be learned from all this, it's don't hire a bigot from California to write your script. Although that would lead to most of Hollywood being out of a job. Maybe that would be for the best. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.